Good morning. Let's get started. Let's do the bear to warm up a little bit. And uh, one of our themes for today is getting the rhythm of Tai Chi. You know, we talk about go with the flow. Everybody likes to talk about going with the flow. Well, how do you actually do that? So there's some things you can do that help train that feeling. So as you're doing the bear, I want you to just focus on the continuous rotation and movement of the arms. That they're not stopping, they're not doing anything extra, they're just following the motion and they're in constant motion. There's no place that they stop and then have to start up again. It's just a continuous motion, turning, releasing, letting the arms go nice and easy, letting go of the stresses of the day, of the week, of the month, letting everything go and just turning and breathing and relaxing. And notice how your arms are making a, a rotation around your body, like ribbons around a maypole or something. They're just going, going, going. They don't come to a stop. Your body turns and changes direction, and that changes your arms and makes them come with you. I want you to really focus on what's happening in the arms and feel like they are in constant motion not because you're moving them, but because the whole body is moving and they are part of that motion. So get that feeling, really letting go, noticing the roundness and the coming and going of each arm as you shift and turn. Nice and easy, nothing extra, nothing special, just turning, turning, turning. And now really focus on those arms. And I want you to, we're gonna move into the 70-30 bear. And I want the same feeling in the arms that as the body turns, the arms follow. So you're going to start in a V, step out, shift, turn, stay in your front leg, stay in your front leg, and then come back. Arms are not stopping, just like we got them going in the first bear. They're just in motion. And what you're doing is following the motion with the whole body so that your arms stay in the rotation and your body is just repositioning itself in and out of 70-30s to make that happen. So you're Sitting back, changing feet, the arms don't stop. Turn, turn, staying in the front leg. Arms keep going, body changes position underneath this same motion that you were just doing in the first bear is happening here. Open, close, Open, step back, arms are in motion. You're following that rhythm. It has a rhythm of its own. It's not your decision. At this point I do this, at that point I do that. You're following the flow, if you will, of the rotation of the body and the swinging of the arms. So you don't manipulate it, you don't control it, you follow it, you stick with it, watch it play out, and change your body underneath the constant motion of the turning of the waist and the swinging of the arms. If I'm going at a speed that doesn't work for you, find your own speed. The thing you want to do is have the motion not come to a stop. So you can do it a little slower if you need to.
you can do it faster. If faster works better. You can pick the speed, but once you pick a speed and you set it in motion, then it's up to you to follow it. So we'll do this another minute or two. Find the rhythm that works for you, that you can keep the waist turning and the arms swinging without coming to a stop. And then notice what it takes to reposition your body underneath that const the perpetual motion machine of your waist and arms is giving you the timing. You follow it. You may not hit it every time, that's okay. But you wanna keep coming back to the motion is set and you're just changing underneath it. And we'll do one more round of this on each side. And take a break. Shake out your legs. So this idea of set something in motion it plays out, you're sticking with it and following it and letting that determine the changes that you have to make in your body to stay with the motion that is playing out without having it come to a stop and die and then having to restart it again. So I wanna do another little um, exercise to help us look at this practice and this is very simple. It's so simple, it might drive you crazy. But what we wanna do is just shift back and forth. I'm gonna do it just on one, one side at a time so that you really can focus on this. So notice my feet are um, offset from one another. I'm stepping into my rear foot and as I hit bottom in my foot, I want my hand that's swinging to also hit bottom. So I step and follow that motion. I come back into my front leg, go into my back leg. The arm is just set in motion. It's set in motion because I'm turning my waist and shifting. So back leg, front leg. At the moment I switch, I want the hand to be at the bottom, just like my weight is hitting the bottom and swinging forward and back, forward and back. Really simple. Go ahead and change legs. The arm that you're swinging goes with the leg that steps back. Have it just go to the corner. You don't need to go very far at all. Just, and you can even forget about the other side of your body for right now. Just looking at one simple thing. And notice when I come forward, my rear heel comes up off the ground. When I go back, it's gonna be, uh, you know, you're really just shifting, letting it all go from one foot to the other. And the arm is just following the motion, but it hits bottom as you hit the bottom of that foot. It's gonna turn me just a little bit as it drops and swings up to the back, brings me back to the front. It's essentially the same motion that we've been doing. The body turns, 
the arm swings, you don't control it, you don't hold it back, it just goes. Now notice that if you stop in the back, your arm should then just fall. You don't want it to be something that stops when you stop because then you're controlling it and holding on. And then you won't be able to find the rhythm and you won't be with the flow. So let it go, follow it. It's in motion. Your job is just to stay with it. It's like the solstice. There's a slight pause as it reaches its extreme, but it doesn't come to a stop. It has to keep moving. So it goes up, it comes down. And in doing that, you very carefully follow the movement. And you can change legs as often as you want now. Feeling it go. You can go faster or slower, just like we were doing before. Find your rhythm, the one that works for you. If you go too slowly, you might end up holding it. So make sure you can go at a speed that you can let it go. And if you go too fast, you could miss the moment. So you want to go at a speed that you can follow the motion, watch it play out without letting it come to a stop. It swings up, it falls back down. And you can, for extra points, you can figure out if you can change feet without stopping your arms and the turning of the waist. It can almost be like a dance, which is exactly what you do when you dance. You've got to find the rhythm and stick with it and follow it. So let yourself go. Have some fun with this, but look for the places that you want to control it, that you want it to stop. Or that you go too fast and get away from yourself kind of cutting it short, right? I can go fast and now I'm not actually, see how now my arm is moving in a, a, a I don't know, weird way. It's not um, following, hitting bottom, swinging up with me following it. So find the pace that works for you. Shifting and turning, shifting and turning. It's all the same. Let it go, let the arm go. If you need to stop for a moment and shake out your arms so that you don't control them, so that you don't make things happen. Let the shoulders go, let your arms just be loose. And then let that looseness play out in your movements. You can make them a little bigger if you want. You can step with your feet a little further apart and give yourself a little more oomph. But whatever works for you, the thing you're looking for is the timing that you're following the timing that is not controlled by you. You set it in motion and then you let it go. So those of you who have done this with us know we could do this for a long time. Not gonna spend all morning doing this. So get another good hit off it and then we'll do a first third. Having the arm and the shifting of the weight work together. One thing playing out through the whole body. Now the time that it takes for your weight to shift is different from the time that it takes your arm to swing. So they're not moving in lockstep. 
But you want to notice that moment when the weight shifts and the hand drops. And you want to notice the moment when it swings up and falls back without you controlling it. It should not come to a stop. If you stop in the back, your arm should just swing back down. A little bit more, do it on each side, say three more times. Rest your legs and we'll do a form, first third. Begin. Setting the body in motion and following it. Notice how the movements play out and lead to the next one. The arm swings and it swings back up. It falls down. You follow it. Let's do that again. I want to do another first third. You know what you're looking for. Just try and keep the movement fluid. So nice and loose. You're free moving. Your arms aren't held. You're not putting them where they need to go. You're setting it in motion and following the changes. And go.
Okay, I'm gonna pass this on to Lee now and uh, he's going to look at it in the form. Great, so let's continue. Um, I've been thinking about this whole notion of how the rhythm of a move pl plays out while you're doing the form while I've been practicing for the last couple of weeks. Um, and so we wanted to bring this to this first Sunday practice. And this is uh, not just watching the flow from one posture to the next. You know, we work on that a fair amount where, you know, you sit back, you're going into a, from press into push, um, or going into press and then allowing that to take you right into push. Coming at the end of push and releasing and letting that take you right into single whip. So that's an aspect of this, of not having breaks between the postures. We get those breaks between the postures a lot because we learn by going from posture to posture. And so you kind of implicitly in your mind do a slideshow. And so you say, okay, next. And then you move on. Okay, take the picture. And so having those moments of take the picture makes there be breaks between one move and the next. I'm coming into press. Okay, press is completed. Let me make sure everything's right. Okay, now go into push. Push is completed. Make sure everything is right. And those little breaks keep the flow from, the form from having that flow like a great river flowing ever on. There are also opportunities to space out. Um, you get to press and, oh yeah, okay. Okay, now I'm back at it. You get to push, oh okay, take a little coffee break um, and then get back at it. So we spend a lot of time looking at how do you get rid of those breaks between the postures? How do you have it be that the culmination of one move just leads immediately into the next? And the tip, we say this all the time, is that after you reach a completion, let go and let that take you forward. You know, if um, I let go of something, it falls. I mean, I could grab my book or something. I'm not going to actually drop anything. But if I let go of this dorje, it's going to fall to the ground. It doesn't just stay suspended in the air. Um, equally, when you reach the end of a posture, if I get to the end of a posture and I let go, I'm going to start moving. At that moment of letting go, the body will start moving. And that's your chance to use your awareness, your intention, your E, to direct it, that motion that started because you let go, to direct that motion into the next move. So let's do another first third. It's first Sunday, we can do a lot of first thirds. Let's do another first third. And what I want you to look at is at the end of each posture, the way that you let go and that starts the next posture. Yeah. And then we're gonna move on to the playing out in a posture because that's what we actually wanna be working on today. But let's get this once more. So another first third. Um, and so you're standing here in the V, rear crown of the head suspended, feeling your connection to the ground. And the very first thing you do is let go. And that puts you into motion. The first one, let go, the arms fall and follow that motion up and out to the fingers. When the hands come down, breathe in and fill, and then let go. That starts the next motion. motion. The completion of ward off, release, and use your awareness to lead you into the next ward off. Completion, release, and follow that through roll back. Completion of press, release. That sets you into motion. Follow that into push. And let go. That starts you moving. Follow that to single whip.
This is an easy one. Lifting hands and then just let go. The hands fall, the foot moves. Shouldering and release. Follow that motion to white crane. Another easy one, just let go. The arms swing. Release down into the front foot. Release, the arms swing. Release down into the front foot, fist opens up. Let go, follow that into cross hands. Let go, that shifts you, turns your foot. Standing up and filling. And now let go and let that take you into your next step. So Beth talked about the solstice. You know, the days are getting longer and longer and longer. There's the longest days and then the days start getting shorter. If it doesn't come up and then plateau flat for a week of the longest day and then come down, there is a moment that is the longest day. Now, you're on a roller coaster and you go up to the top of the roller coaster and then you slide down. The roller coaster doesn't have to do anything. You get up to the top and then you let go and you slide down. Um, so going from one move to another, the moves have this filling and after a filling, then there's a release and a letting go. It's just like the breath. When you breathe, you breathe in and then right away you let go and breathe out. So we're trying to take those holding of our breath either at the full inhale or the full exhale out of what we're doing. So just breathe with me for a second here. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, belly releases. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, belly releases. So this is continuous. Like the path of the sun as we go through solstice and equinox. Like the riding on the roller coaster. All those things, there's no break. And now this time, hold your breath when you breathe in. Breathe in and hold your breath. Feel that break and then let go. Breathe in, hold your breath. Feel that break, then let go. Now let it be continuous. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, belly releases. Breathing in, belly expands. Breathing out, belly releases. This time hold your breath on the out breath. Breathe in, breathe out, stay out. Breathe in, breathe out, stay out. Okay, let go of that. In and out. And in and out. So you don't have to do anything. We'll often hold our breath, we'll force the breath, when we're doing something difficult. So when we're doing a, a move in Tai Chi where the choreography is complicated or where the move itself is challenging, you know, we're doing one of those things, you'll often find that you hold the breath. The same thing can happen at the end of the moves. You're coming forward to the completion of a move and you hold it rather than coming into the completion of the move and then riding the roller coaster down back into the next move. Coming up to the next top of a roller coaster, those things must have a name, um, coming up to the next top of the roller coaster and letting go and moving on to the next move. So that's a place, that's like holding your breath when you get to the completion of a move and you don't continue right away into the next one. That's like holding your breath at that point. Um, so. You know, that's something we work on a lot and hopefully you're getting a little feeling of that. There's also 
How do you get there? And so, you know, all movement comes from the Dantian. Waste is commander. The turning of the waste is what drives everything as it goes through the body. So those, you know, we know that, but do we actually know it? And what happens is emotion starts and it needs to ripple out through all the limbs of the body and then it comes back down through all the limbs of the body. It starts, it ripples out through all the limbs of the body, then it comes back through all the limbs of the body. So I do this one a lot um, and so let's do it a little bit. Um, after the end of the first third as um, we're getting into, going to uh, Embrace Tiger. So start out, feet parallel, uh, legs straight, not locked. And sit down, as you sit down, the hands come up and cross. And stand up, as you stand up, the hands drop. And sit down, as you sit down, the hands come up and cross. Standing up, letting the hands drop. Again, sitting down. The sitting down is what moves the hands. Standing up. Everything starts and finishes together. I'm sitting down, my knees are bending, my hips are bending, the hands cross at the bottom, I stand up, the hands drop. I sit down, I stand up. So this is a simple motion, do it without the hands. Just sit down, as you're sitting down, the hips continue to bend. And then stand up. As you're standing up, you feel that motion come all the way through the body up to the top of the head. Sit down, the dantian drops, the hips are bending, the knees are bending. Standing up from the feet, it comes all the way up to the top of the head. Now, uh, many of us don't bend our hip joints all the way through there. So we'll sit down and then they'll stop and we'll say, oh yeah, I'm still sitting down. Am I sitting down? Nothing's happening. We'll stand up and our hip joints will s flatten and we'll say, oh yeah, I'm still standing up. Am I still standing up? Nothing's happening. So when I sit down, my dantian lowers, everything goes down. When I stop, I stopped. I don't say, oh, I'm still sitting down. I'm actually bending over and sticking my butt up rather than having it drop. When I stand up, my hip joints continue to change all the way up. I don't come up and say, oh yeah, I'm still standing up. I'm still getting taller. So um, what happens when we do this with our hands, because we don't work the legs and hip joints enough, is we sit down, hip joints stop, and the hands keep moving. We stand up, hip joints stop, and the hands keep moving. So do this without the hands a couple times. And just really know, watch for sitting down and leaning over, sticking your butt out. Just sit down. When you hit bottom, stand up. When you hit the top, sit down again. When you hit the bottom, stand up. So we're not holding our breath. We're not holding our bodies. Down, up. And feel the down, go through the whole body, hips drop, body falls down, feel your feet, feel the up come through the whole body, through the legs, hips, up to the top of the head. The hips drop, the body drops, feel that weight go down to your feet, from the feet up through the body, up to the top of the head. Once more, down, bending the hips and the knees all the way down, up, straightening the hips and the knees all the way up. So. Now you need that same motion to also play out in the hands. And when you have the rhythm right, the thing that we're working on here, when the rhythm is right, the motion plays out all the way to the end of every extremity and then it comes back in. So I don't have this out of sync thing. I don't sit down part way and then move my hands the rest of the way. Uh, maybe occasionally people will do this. Hands are done and then they're sitting down. The hands are done and then they're standing up. Usually not because that's harder on the legs and we're always trying to uh, give our legs a break. So um, as you're doing this, do it with me some more. The sitting down plays out to the hands crossing. The standing up plays out to the hands finishing. Sitting down, feel the hips drop. The weight of the body goes down to the bottom of the feet. Standing up from the feet through the body all the way to the top of the head. And the motion finishes with the arms just exactly when you feel your weight in your feet. 
and just exactly when you feel that reach the top of the head. So the motion plays out through the torso and the legs and the hands. The same motion playing out through all of them. Making sure the hips and the knees are changing all the way down. Making sure the hips and the knees are changing all the way up. Trying to feel the dropping actually cause the motion of the arms. Feeling the rising actually cause the motion of the arms. One motion plays out through the whole body, dropping. Feel the weight reach the bottom of your feet, rising. Feel the rising reach the top of the head, dropping. Weight reaches the bottom of the feet, rising. Energy reaches the top of the head once more. So that's a straightforward one where you've got just a simple motion, the Dantian, rising and falling. And that plays out through the whole body, the weight of the body dropping, hitting the bottom of the feet. The energy coming back up, reaching the top of the head. The dropping, causing the hands to cross. The rising, causing the hands to fall. So that's a really relatively simple choreographically. Nothing's actually simple. but from an external choreography point of view, that one's relatively simple. So let's look at some harder ones. <laughs> so let's do it um, in the punch through withdraw and push in step forward, parry and punch through kind of like a ceiling, sort of like closing. <laughs> so take it from the second brush knee. I'll just run through this a couple times. Okay, sit back, shift forward, take a step, shift, turn the waist, arms move, foot steps, and punch. Down into the front foot, palm up under right armpit, sit back, hands cross, elbows drop into root, and push. Take a step back, back to brush knee. Sit back and shift forward. Allow the foot to swing. Shift, turn, move the hands and foot, and punch. Release, palm up under right armpit, sit back, hands cross, elbows drop, push. Just reposition the hands once more. Sit back, sit forward foot swings. Shift and turn, hands and foot move and punch. Release into the front foot, palm up under armpit. Sit back, hands cross, elbows drop and push. So this is much more complex choreographically, but the same stuff is going on. So let's break it apart and let's look at that synchronization so that the rhythm, the motion can play out through the whole body and that tells you when it's time to make the next move. So right away here from brush knee, when you start out in brush knee, the first thing that you do is you sit back and you turn, turn your waist and pivot your front foot on the heel. So this is the motion here, the Dantian moves back and down and turns. The Dantian turning, sitting back and down and turning causes the front foot to pivot on the heel. And at the same time, that motion plays out in the hands so that they drop the right palm, palm facing the groin about a palm span away from the 
uh, crotch, the left palm has opened towards the front corner. And all of those things are one. They all play out together. So do it a bunch of times. Sit back and turn. Everything happens together. Back to brush knee. Sit back and turn. Everything happens together. So that motion of the Dantian turning plays out in the foot. That motion of the Dantian moving and turning plays out in the foot. That same motion of the Dantian moving and turning plays out in the arms. So they all finish together. Look at the left arm. As you're sitting back and turning, the left arm is rotating so that the palm ends up out. And do that again. Sit back and turn, palm rotates. So it ends out just as the foot finishes. Now look at the right hand, sitting back and it drops as you turn. It reaches this protect the groin place just as you've gotten all the way back and your foot has turned. Again, just the front hand. And now put it all together. Sitting back, this one motion plays out through the both arms and the foot. Both arms and the foot. Once more. And so then we're not done, right? This has taken us up to the top of the, cre the crest of the roller coaster ride, and now we're going to ride down onto the next one. So I don't sit back and turn, stop, look around, see what's next, and then do the next move. No, it comes back, and right away it swings into the next. So I, and notice that this is dynamic again. Watch how my hands are not staying static. They come back, I shift and the arms swing. So I don't come back, hold my arms and just move the body. That would not be letting the motion play out through the whole body, that would be to kill the rhythm. So take it from brush knee. You've got the first part. Sit back, let everything finish and then shift forward, let the arms expand. Back to brush knee. Sit back, everything finishes together, shift forward, arms expand. Once more. Sit back, everything finishes together, shift forward, arms expand. And now watch as I'm doing this, my rear foot, I get all my weight out of it, and I'm in the front, the rear has come up to the ball, not the toe, if it comes up to the toe, the leg will slacken, but to the ball, but all my weight is in the front. I'm not using the rear leg anymore. So this finishes, this finishes. I just reach 100% forward as my arms swing, as my rear foot comes up, so that I can let go and step. So let's do it through the step. Brush knee. Everything happens together. Follow it forward, release and step. Again. Everything happens together. Follow it forward, release and step. Once more. Everything happens together. Follow it forward, feel that happen through both hands, release and step. So now I'm at another one of those places, the end of an out breath, the roller coaster has dropped and is about to go up the next uh, crest for the roller coaster, the solstice, winter solstice has happened and the days are about to start getting longer. I've reached one of those and I want to move on to the next one. So I sit back, everything happens together, I shift forward, see how this plays out in both arms. As I'm doing that shifting forward, it continues in both arms. They've reached their extreme, just as the rear foot has come up to the ball. I release, everything steps. As soon as it steps, I follow it into it and let that take me to this place where I'm 100% in the front and my arms have swung up at my side. So once I'm doing this, it comes forward and expands. I release it and step. Right away I shift and my arms have come up to the side. My waist is faced left of front because I'm going to turn and go right of front to take the next step. So, again, brush knee. Get the timing. One motion, the Dantian moves and that sets everything else in motion. Go ahead, Dantian moves, everything plays out together. Dantian moves, 
Release and right away, shift up to this place. Now make sure your face left to front. Front right now for me is the mirrors and Valerie. So I'm facing left to front. Make sure you're really left to front. Check out your arms, see where they are. They should be here at your side, not reaching behind. When I reach behind, that puts tension and everything in me. So they're comfortable here at my side. Again, back to brush knee. Waist moves, everything changes. Continue, plays out through both the arms and the foot. Step and shift, you've caught the arms. Once more. Sit back, waist turns, step, shift, you've caught the arms. Make sure your rear foot is really empty. You can pick it up without moving the body. Okay, now the next piece. And so when we teach you the next piece, a lot of times we teach it um, a little held because we're trying to get you to actually turn the waist rather than just arbitrarily moving the hands and feet. So it's very likely that I've done something like this with you. Um, that when you get to here, I've said, okay, now you're gonna turn the waist from left of center to right of center. And as you do that, the rear foot moves. So just as I get to the right corner, my foot has touched down. So I turn just as I get to the right corner, the foot has touched down. At the same time, the arms are here at the side, and as I turn my waist, they get to the other side. So that it's the waist turning that does all of this. And then I've probably done my little Ben Low imitation, where I come forward here, and I turn, 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 settle, settle to get to the end there. Because what we're trying to show you is this is not with the arms and the foot. It's not move the arms, move the foot, figure out how where the waist should go. It's not move the foot so I feel stable, move the hands, figure out where the waist should go. It's the waist that really drives it. But doing that rigid lockstep thing is a little deceptive because to make this happen I have to tighten everything so that I can cause the whole thing to move as one. So when I do that I've welded the body. Now it's good because there's a synchronization going on between the hands and the feet. It's bad because it's tension and tightness. So I want you to find the playing out of this waist turn which is not big. I'm left of center and I'm going to turn right of center. And that playing out of that waist turn needs to move the arms and the foot. So that the waist turns, the hands and the feet move, everything finishes together. So notice how as I'm doing this, just as my left heel touches down, my left hand reaches the extreme of this strike. My right hand reaches hanging here at my side. So all that happens together. It's one motion that plays out through the body but everything doesn't move in lockstep. So let's try this some more. Um, brush knee and go ahead. Everything together, release. Shift, okay, now turn the waist and have that play out through the hands and foot so everything comes together and punch. Reset back to brush knee. Sit back, one motion. Forward, one motion. Stepping, shift, turn, moves the arms, moves the foot, everything arrives together, and punch. Once more, I think we can just fit. <laughs> Sitting back, forward, turn, let everything play out together. And so the thing I'm wanting you to pay attention to is the way that a simple motion, the motion of turning my waist from left to right, plays out through the body. It plays out through the body with integrity so that each part of the body moves at its right time and it plays out through the body with unity so that everything starts and finishes together. And a lot of times we'll trade one or the other of those off. We'll think that letting it play out through one part of the body with integrity means that that part of the body essentially becomes disconnected from the rest of the body. 
or we'll think that in order to have everything start and finish together, to get the unity, we have to tighten and hold. And so I want you to let this express completely with integrity through all the parts of the body and see how when you do that, everything starts and finishes together. So we get unity through integrity, through authenticity. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing this part here, and I turn my waist, as I turn the waist, watch what's happening here in my rear leg. See how the rear leg is changing? It's not just there and I'm turning the waist, leaving it behind, but I'm also not lockstep moving it. As I do this, the rear leg is changing and then at some point right about here, the rear leg needs to step forward in order to move with integrity. And when it steps forward, I'm continuing to turn my waist. It's the turning of the waist that actually moves that foot. And so that means when I finish turning the waist, the foot finishes. At the same time, the arms are moving. So when I finish turning the waist, the arms have just finished. The right hand comes across and drops down right at my side. So let's do this, you know, another 100,000 times and um, pay attention to those things. One motion, everything moves together. One motion, release and step. Shift, one motion moves the hands and the foot, everything finishes together and punch. Reset to brush knee. Back, forward. Turning, let the turning play out with integrity through the hands and the foot. Once more, sitting back. And punch. So this is harder than what we started out with. What we started out with is we were just looking at individual places. And we were looking at when you reach the completion of a move, can you let go and take that right into the next move so that you don't have those breaks that are like holding your breath. Um, now you have to do that every place, not just at the ends of the moves. It's not just a slideshow where we've shot a couple pictures right at the final posture. It's continuous through the whole thing. And continuous through the whole thing means you need to let this play out through all the parts. And you've got to figure that out. The next bit's relatively straightforward. I've punched and, you know, top of the roller coaster, I don't stop at the punch. I punch and right away let go. That takes my hand underneath my armpit. I turn my waist back. The waist should finish turning back right as the hands cross. I don't then keep turning and turn my body farther or stop turning the waist and just move the hands. Let's see if I can make that mistake more obvious. Just move the arm. <laughs> but I finish turning my waist right as the hands cross and right away then, no break like I just did, right away then my left hip joint is going to drop and come back so that I'm square and see what's happening there. As this moves, that plays out through my left hand and turns it over. At the same time, the right palm is facing me too. As I sit back and drop, the right hand is going to turn over. So the left hand has to move farther. It has to get from all the way over the right to the front. The right hand doesn't have to move very far. It has to turn. But all of those things happen with integrity. The motion plays out through each of my arms. And in unison, in harmony, all the pieces go together. So I sit back, the waist is crossed right away, I'm sinking, elbows drop. Right away, I'm sitting forward and pushing. So let's do it a couple more times. And uh, then we'll see where we take it from there. <laughs> Brush knee. One motion. Down into the front foot. Sit back, the waist stops turning right as the hands cross. The waist turns back to the front, the elbows drop and push. Just go back to the punch. Forward, at the end of the turn, the left palm is up under your right armpit. Do that again, back to the punch. Small turn in the waist. The waist turns to the left. While that's happening, the left palm ends up under the right armpit. So make sure that those two happen together. Now sit back and stop when the hands have crossed. 
that's as far as you turn. You don't have to go farther to the right. And hopefully you kept turning all of the way rather than turning your waist a little bit and then just moving the hand. So back to the punch. Forward, palm up just at the end of the turn. Sit back, hands crossed just at the end of the turn. Sink and turn back to the front. Both hands have turned out. Shift forward. So those are the checkpoints and the overall correspondences that you need to have. Now we put a lot of breaks in there and we need to pull that apart. So from the punch, we'll just do that a couple times. Turn, 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 and push. Punch. Turn, 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 and push. Once more. Waist turns, palm up under armpit. Waist turns, hands cross. Waist turns, elbows drop. Palms turn out, push. Okay, let's run through that sequence a little bit. Brush knee. Go ahead. Left hand drops. Go ahead. Once more and really try to take any of the seams out. At the completion of each move, the next one starts. All the pieces move with integrity and in harmony. The easy one. Three more times. Sinking, the sinking plays out. Rising, the rising comes up. Feel the weight drop and hit the bottom of your feet just as the hands cross. Feel the energy come up and hit the rear crown of the head just as you finish once more. Great. So, correct one move, correct them all. Make a change one place, that change should ripple through your whole form. When you're doing it, what you'll discover is that it doesn't. There's places you're stuck. There's places where you become discombobulated, where you don't move with unity, where you don't move with harmony. Um, you'll discover there's places where you're not able to let emotion play all the way out through the arm or the leg or the torso. I mean, so those are all places to then look at. And what you'll find is you're not relaxed. You'll find that for whatever reason, you're tight and tense. And that reason can be a technical reason. It can be that your balance isn't right or your weight isn't separated. You know, if I do this and I don't have my weight separated, I'm going to have trouble moving that foot. And I'm going to have to move the foot suddenly because if I move the foot slowly, I fall. And, and so you know that even if you don't admit it in your head. Your body knows, your body says, yo, dude, you are not ready to take a step. So if you're going to move that foot, even though I'm telling you not to, you'd better move it fast. 
And so those places where you find yourself having to move your foot quickly, those are places where you've made a technical mistake. You're not actually weight separated, balanced, so that you can easily move the foot. So you'll find places like that where you have to go quickly, where you don't allow the motion to play out with integrity. And it can be technical. You know, if I'm leaning, I'm going to have the same problem. When I pick my foot off, I'm going to fall. So if I'm not, if I can actually get myself body upright, then it's easy for the foot to step. So as you go through this and you look for those places, find those places where you're not able to move everything together, where you have to do something sudden and Don't just pretend that didn't happen. Um, Actually look and figure out what the causes are. Why do I have to do that? Is it a technical error or is it just damned tightness that I get through here and I can't let go of that rear leg so I have to move it like a block, right? So I'm here, I'm actually pretty balanced, I can pick my foot up. But if I tighten the rear leg, now it's not able to move with integrity. So when I did that, I created the error. I created the error of tension and I can see that it makes my foot not move the way that I want it to. And that motion of that foot is not the result of the waist moving it, it's me making it go. So when you go through your form and you're looking for this allowing the rhythm to play out, allowing the motions to reach their completion and then right away go into the next one, you'll find places where it's working great. That's fantastic. Notice those because that's places where you're moving in the right direction and that's what you want to get every place. Um, And so, you know, acknowledge that and feel good about it because it's hard. Um, Then notice the places where that's not true. And rather than beating yourself up over those or trying to pretend that that didn't really happen, um, try to figure out how come and try to look at little bits of change. If I get through here and I'm not really separated so that if I move to that foot I start to fall, see if you can't get a little more separated and a little more separated and then you can allow the foot to change. So I don't have to go from falling, must move my foot, to perfection at once. I can go from oh, I'm not really separated, I've got 70% here and 30% there. Okay, now I've got 80% here and 20% there. That's better, I don't fall as much. And so you can feel pretty good about that. And then next week, 80%, 90%, I don't fall as much. Next week, 90%, 100%, oh, now I can just do this. So go ahead and let this teach you in the form. Look for those. Does the motion play out through all the parts of the body? Does it play out authentically with integrity through each part of the body? And does the playing out make all the parts of the body move in harmony, in unity? And and this will teach you a lot. So this being first Sunday, we're going to run a little bit longer than an hour. And um, we're going to do a couple more first thirds. And I'll probably talk at some point. But mostly I just want you to do the first third. We'll do it three times. I want you to do the first third and really enjoy and love the places where it plays out with harmony and integrity and try to nudge the places where there's force and tension and technical errors in the correct direction so that they become more full of integrity, more full of harmony and unity. Take it from the top. As always, start by letting go, which puts everything into motion. At the completion of one move, release and let that take you right into the next move.
Again. Let go. That bows the arms and moves the foot. Release starts the arms moving and follow them up. Feel your feet all the way out to the fingertips. Hands reach bottom. Inhale and fill. Release. Arms move, foot moves, everything finishes together. Everything finishes together. Release. Completion of ward off, release. You reach the back just as the left palm is turned up. Hands come together just as you're reaching press. Arms finish pushing when you get forward. Extend the hook and notice that the arms keep changing step. Let the hands drop and the foot come back together. Have the waist turn all the way to the final posture. Hands drop, footsteps together. Everything opens, hands and left leg, release. Make sure the hands keep moving all the way through this, even as the footsteps, they all finish together. Sitting back, one motion. Coming forward, one motion. Release and catch the arms. Turn the waist. Hands and foot move together and punch. Sink, palm up at the end of the turn. Cross hands at the end of the turn. Elbows drop, end of the turn and push. Hands finish just as you finish turning. Foot and hands together. And when you stand up, Reach the top of your head just as the hands drop. Let go. That turns the body and the heel. Shift, inflating, release. Full. Let go to step. And we'll do one more. Go ahead.
We always try to make our first Sundays enjoyable and leave you feeling good. Um, we generally don't do a lot of grinding work in these, um, but we try to have it actually flow and give you a good, good start to your Sunday. Um, so that's what we did again today. We're really looking at this. How does the Beth started out talking about going with the flow? How do you have all of the pieces go with the flow? How does the rhythm work so that it plays out through the whole body? How do you let the motions have integrity in each part of the motion and be unified and harmonious as a complete motion? And so that's what we've been working on today. Now the dirty little secret is that you have to do the grinding hard technical work. Mm -hmm. I was looking at, you know, just for this step. If I don't actually get myself truly separated, I'm not going to be able to step gracefully, skillfully, with integrity, in harmony. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's easy to say, check, oh yeah, yeah, separate the weight. Oh yeah, yeah, turn the waist, yeah, check. Oh yeah, yeah, body upright, check. Um, but you really have to do the hard work on all of those so that you've got those skills so that then you can do this. Because this is really nice. This feels really good. And that other work, the grinding, grueling work along the way there is what builds the platform for you to be able to do this. So you can't just skip to this. This is the good stuff and you should not ignore this. No, this is, you know, this is where we're trying to go. But to actually get there, you have to do all of that hard work along the way. So, you know, uh, this coming week in the future, we'll probably do some more of that grinding hard work. But this is the payoff. And so don't neglect this, but also don't tell yourself that's all I have to do. You got to do the hard work too. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this today. Take it into the rest of your life. Um, you know, we're putting this on YouTube. So we'll stick around for the next couple minutes and uh, you can stop and say hi and, you know, uh, ask us questions, whatever. Um, we're, we're active, we'll, we'll monitor the chat. And, um, and if you don't, if you're watching this out of sync later, if you've got questions or comments, please feel free to email us or reach out to us anyway. Um, we always love hearing from students. And uh, go forth with integrity and in harmony.